there. All right, so remember from yesterday, slope is delta y over delta x. So in this one, we have negative 11 over negative 3. And so our slope is 11 thirds. Okay, this one, delta y over delta x. The numerator, okay, that's plus. So the numerator is 3, and the denominator is negative 11. So there are the answers. For A, or for number 1, it was 11 thirds, and for number 2, it's negative 3 elevenths. And then it says, what do you notice about these slopes? Because this is actually what our whole lesson is today. It is in the warm-up. What is true about 11 thirds and negative 3 elevenths? Okay, Jane, yeah, you're giving away the lesson, but yes, that's what I was looking for. They are opposite reciprocals, and that's just a taste of what we're learning. Let's go over the homework, and then we'll get more into opposite reciprocals. Here's your homework. If you did every problem of your homework, you practice slope a lot, a lot, a lot, right? 1 through 11 was all just find the slope, find the slope, find the slope. So you should be pros at that. And then there were some kind of different ones that ask you different things using the concept of slope. So check your answers and let's see what we want to go over. So we did 12 and 13. We did one just like this in our notes yesterday. I can call this Y instead of a question mark because I want to give it a letter. This is the one where I said it's kind of like Jeopardy. You're working backwards. You already know the answer and you're trying to find the question per se. So um, the line has a slope of two-thirds. That's the answer. So two-thirds equals, and now we're going to write our slope formula. Y minus Y over X minus X. We're going to clean it up a little bit. Two-thirds equals Y minus 5 over 6. I think we have this exact one in our notes, I think. Um, you can cross multiply from here. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times y minus 5 is 3. y minus 15. Not this exact one. Add 15 to both sides. 27 equals 3y. y is 9. Are we okay with that? So you set the slope formula equal to the given slope. You simplify, then you cross multiply. Lots of things that end in a Y. Okay, on 14, 14 through 17, remember I worked one of these on the homework help already, but um, it says the right angle is at point B. So we have a right triangle. This is B, this is A, this is C, this is the right angle. Find the slopes of the legs of the triangle. So we're going to find the slope of AB and we're going to find the slope of BC. So let's find the slope of AB. I put the M there for slope. I don't, there's no specific notation. Anyways, all right, so the slope of AB. So I'm going to do Y minus Y over X minus X, and we get 2 over 2. Slope of AB is 1. Slope of BC. Slope of BC. 3 minus 4 over 4 minus 3, negative 1. Because negative 1 over 1 would be negative 1. So the slope of AB is 1 and the slope of BC is negative 1. What, um, what one of the students was telling me is that if you notice on all of these, we have 1 and negative 1. It's kind of looking like the warm-up. 3, negative 1 third. 2, negative 2, 1 half, 3 halves, negative 2 thirds. That's a clue. All of those created a, the right angle in the triangle, right? So perpendicular, opposite, reciprocal, it's all connected. So last night's homework leads into tonight's homework. Last night's homework leads into tonight's lesson. Today's. So we're going to investigate. And if you already know, then we'll just remind you how parallel and perpendicular slopes are related. So look at the green and the gold. If I were to write the slope of the green, 
I would go up one, two, three. I would go to the left, one, two, three, four. Since I went to the left, it makes my denominator negative, so that line has a slope of negative three-fourths. If I looked at this one right here, up one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So these lines are parallel. I am telling you that they're parallel. So what's our conclusion about the slope of parallel lines? Write it down in your notes. Parallel lines will always have equal slopes. Their slopes will be equal. The same. Yes. So I'm not going to use the word congruent because remember their slope is a number. So we're going to use the word equal. Okay, looking at the next slide. I am telling you that these lines are for sure perpendicular. So we know these lines are perpendicular. Let's count their slopes and let's come to a conclusion about the slopes of perpendicular lines, which we kind of already did. But we're going to do it officially. Rise, one, two, three, run, one, two, three, four. Same slope as the previous slide. I didn't move that one. Gold. Rise, one, two, three, four, run, one, two, three. So if all perpendicular lines behave the same way that these perpendicular lines behaved, then our conclusion is that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Probably want to write the word slopes in here, even though it didn't really fit in that line of text. So. If the lines are parallel, they have equal slopes. If they are perpendicular, their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So the opposite means to change the sign, and the reciprocal means to flip the fraction. So you change the sign, and you flip the fraction. Sometimes people say instead of opposite reciprocal, they say to flip and switch. Flip the number, switch the sign. But the correct terminology is opposite reciprocal. Okay, let's practice some opposite reciprocals. All right, I want you to number your paper A through F, and I want you to write the opposite reciprocal of each of these numbers, and I will call on you. Go. So, Kath, what did you get for A? Say your answer. Very good. He said eight sevenths. Correct answer. B, what did you get for B? Say it in your mic. Very good. Negative one fourth is perfect. What about C? What did you get? Very good. C, the answer is ten. D, what did you get for D? Negative one. Perfect. E. Good. Negative eight thirteenths. And F. Yay! Guys, you got a hundred. You officially have graduated from writing opposite reciprocals. Very good. Can I answer any questions? I didn't even trick you when it was a whole number. You knew to flip it and, and that it was under that there was a one underneath. Oh my goodness. Yay. Um, this is kind of a theorem. It, it's just a fact. Lines will be perpendicular if the product, what does product mean? Multiple answer. Yes, if the product of their slopes is negative one. So like if I take my negative eight thirds and my three eighths, what is the product of those? Well, 8 times 3, so it'd be negative 24 over 24, which would be? So, lines that are parallel, the product of their slopes will always be negative 1. Unless you're using undefined, and then that kind of gets, you can't really multiply undefined, right? All right, don't say the answer out loud yet. Don't say it yet. What would the slope of a line parallel to a line with an undefined slope be? 
Yes, it wasn't a trick question. Very good. So if a line has undefined slope and I want to be parallel, then I'm going to have undefined slope. Kendra. Um, okay. To a line with undefined slope. A line perpendicular to a line with undefined slope would have a slope of zero. So what we're saying is that zero and undefined are opposite reciprocals, kind of. Think about this. Yesterday when we were doing slope and we got an answer that was like 14 over zero. And we talked about if you go to your calculator, that's going to give you an error. It's going to say error in your calculator, not able to divide by zero. So that's when our slope is undefined. But if we do the opposite reciprocal, What's 0 divided by negative 14? If we flip and switch it, I don't care what the denominator is. I don't even care that it's negative. You will get 0. So 0 and undefined are opposite reciprocals. It works like that. Okay, find the slope of line AB. Then find the slope of a line parallel to line AB and perpendicular to line AB. Simple, simple. So we got the slope of the line is negative one-third. The slope of the line parallel would be equal to negative one-third. And then the opposite reciprocal of negative one-third is three. Awesome. Good job. No questions? Okay, I give you two lines, and I want you to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. You have a one in three chance. So let's identify the slopes, because the slopes are going to tell us. What is the slope of line number one? Don't say 4x. That's a common misconception. I feel like students who come to me from algebra are always putting the letter x in their slopes. x never belongs in a slope. A slope is not a variable. Okay, so the slope of this one is 4. What's the slope of number 2? Be careful. That one's not as easy. Don't say 8. Don't say 8. You have to, the equation has to be in y equals mx plus b form to find the slope. So we are going to subtract 8x from both sides. Negative 2y equals negative 8x minus 6. That's a lot of negatives, people. Divide by negative 2. That cancels. y equals 4x plus 3. So the slope is 4. So what's our answer? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Parallel. The answer is parallel. Good. Same question. Are the slopes of segment, I guess, segment AB and segment CD parallel, perpendicular, or neither? All right. So the slope of AB ended up being 2, the slope of CD ended up being 2, and we are at a conclusion of parallel once again. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. The slope of this one is 2 thirds. The slope of this one, let's see, 2y equals negative 3x minus 10 y equals negative 3 has x minus 5. Conclusion, everybody. Perpendicular. Perpendicular, opposite reciprocals. How would we determine if these lines are perpendicular? They kind of maybe look like they're kind of crossing at 90. How would we confirm? Find their slopes. Remember, to find their slopes, you have to find some good points, some really good points where they go through whole numbers, no estimating halves or anything. Um, rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's the slope of the gold line. So what would the slope of the other gold line, they're both gold, need to be if they were perpendicular? 7 by 5. <laughs> 7 fifths. 7 by 5. I've never heard it that way before. Rise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, we just rose 7. 
Run, oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rise seven, run eight. Wah, wah. Parallel, perpendicular, neither. The answer is neither. Are these lines perpendicular? No. Okay. Is this triangle a right triangle? How would we determine if this is a right triangle? What would we need to do, guys? Find the slope. It should be perpendicular to AC. Very good. I like that. If AB is perpendicular to AC, then triangle ABC is a right triangle. It's always good to write um, our, our justify. It's always good to justify our problem with a conditional, an if-then statement. So we're trying to determine if this is a right angle. So from A to B, rise 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Rise 3, run 9. Okay, next one. Rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Run backwards 1, 2, 3. Woohoo! It is a right triangle because our slope of our legs were opposite reciprocals. Uh oh. Try this one. We're getting close, but try this one. I'm going to let you look at it. This is kind of like the problem that we did on the homework, the problems that we did yesterday, but this one's taking it a step further. Find the value of x so that the line through x3 and 2, 6 is perpendicular to the line, to the line 0, 2, zero and six, 6, 6. So we're going to start by finding the slope of the line that we want to be perpendicular to. 6 minus 2 over 6 minus 0. Subtract your y's divided by subtract your x's. That was weird the way I said that. So the slope that we want to be perpendicular to is 2 thirds. What's our target slope? Negative 3 out of 2. Yeah, good. So there's our answer. We want our slope to equal negative 3 halves. That's our answer. Okay? So now we need to do our slope equation. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go this way. 3 minus 6 over x minus 2. I kind of like my variable to not be negative, and that's why I did it in that order. Okay, let's clean this up. Negative 3 halves equals, let's see, 3 minus 6. Oh, this is looking good. If you notice, our numerator is already equal. Negative 3 equals negative 3. What does our denominator have to equal? Two. So what number can I subtract 2 from and get 2? 4. So could I have cross multiplied? Yes, I could have. Did I need to? No. X is 4. That would force the line to be perpendicular to the line we were given. Okay? X is 4. Miss Tanton, why do you have to do 6 minus 2? Why can't you do 2 minus 6? Well, I can do... Because if the point flipped, then that would be... Um, I could have done 2 minus 6. You want me to do 2 minus 6? Two yeah, would minus that be the same six. answer? Of course it would. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. The negatives will cancel and we'll get 2 thirds again. 